Now then everyone, how you doing? It's me, Tom FM, back once again with another. This is a weird intro. I've never introduced myself like this in a video. Try doing something different, and it just didn't feel right at all. Let's go again. Hello and welcome back to the Tom FM channel and welcome to a Gateshead United video. Gateshead of a team that we're doing on Twitch as a stream, and I promise you guys that I do season updates every single season that we finish, and we finished a season with Gateshead now, so it's time for an update video. The whole idea behind these is that I know that everyone can't be there for every single stream, and they might want to recap things, and they might want to see bits that are, you know, they may have missed in streams, and obviously not everyone watches the streams, and maybe they want to keep up with this but not watch every single stream. Basically, it's just more content for you guys. But obviously, I can't not say it right at the start of a stream recap video. Uh, go over to Twitch, follow me on Twitch, would massively appreciate that. We are close to 3,000 followers on there. The more the merrier, and hopefully you can catch some streams and obviously see the, the Gateshead journey. So I've not quite worked out the best way to record these videos yet. We'll sort of go with the flow and see what happens. But as you can see, we are at the end of the season. And as you can see, we won the league title by a single point. It was very dramatic. It went down literally to the 93rd minute of the final day of the season. But uh, more of that to come later on. I'll sprinkle in clips of uh, the streams as well so you get an idea of what happened as well and the excitement that was going on at the time. But uh, we'll start at the very start of the season when we joined the club. Uh, we've got a, we've got a Langstaff. When you want Matty Longstaff, but you get Macaulay Langstaff instead. It doesn't look that good either for a striker. He's a striker with 10 finishing. But I guess we've got to remember that we are playing at Vanarama National North level. He could actually be class. So the first character I think we sort of spotted was Macaulay Langstaff. Not a Longstaff, a Langstaff. And actually, he turned out to be pretty decent this season. He played mostly as a rotational striker. Uh, he got 10 goals in the league, 15 overall, and was actually pretty useful. But we had plenty of characters in the squad, uh, particularly when we realised we had this one psychopath in our first team meeting where we completely lost the dressing room. Uh, code of Conduct is finished, which they don't like. Don't be cross with me. I can, honestly, watch the VODs. Watch the VOD. I, I told you my assistant manager does that. Everyone hates me for that. Jake Cooper's hurt. He, he must be a psychopath. He must be a psychopath if he's hurt by being lenient on the players. So yeah, Jake Cooper, a bit of a mad lad. He was obviously not very happy with how lenient I was uh, planning to be, apparently. Uh, we only had him on loan until January, as it turned out. So we lost him in January, which was... Uh, Rather frustrating, but it did mean that we got to bring in a new centre-back instead of him in January, who uh, turned out to be 42 years old with one pace and two acceleration. Luckily, Darren Ward was only meant to be used as backup and will be leaving the club as soon as possible because he was only there for backup. But as you can see, uh, 42, one pace, two acceleration. He started playing football before I was born. His professional career started before I was born and it's now ended with me because hopefully he won't play for anyone else ever again because he should retire. But I am getting ahead of myself talking about transfers and things like that. I think the first thing that we will do is talk about transfers because this team was not strong enough at the start of the season. When we came in, there was a good baseline of players but we needed some more of them. So if you look at the transfer history, I believe if we go down from Steve Kane to these players, these ones were brought in not by me. These are brought in by the game I guess uh, but these ones are the ones that we brought in we found a guy called Steve Kane who was a 16 year old regen right at the start of the game a bit weirdly uh, I didn't realize you get regens right at the start of the game but you can because we found Steve Kane and he looked pretty good had some pace could dribble well and could cross well we wanted the winger we got a winger. He's very, very good. Has played really well this season, actually. Just under a 7 rating across all the games. He's played 5 goals, 7 assists. Uh, an integral part of the team, really. But he's unambitious and got no determination. So he might not develop very quickly, but was good enough for us this season. Dennis Giamfi came in. He turned out to be probably our best player that we've got. Annoyingly, he missed quite a lot of games because he kept going on international duty with Ghana. But... He is a right back who joined us who should not be playing for us because if we look at his report, he's operating at Skybet League 2 level and we are currently a Vanarama National North side. Uh, so he dropped down to play for us, but he has been superb. As you can see, uh, a 6.85 average rating doesn't give him justice because he was superb defensively this season. Not very good at getting forward, but in terms of keeping clean sheets, superb. To compliment Giamfi, on my left-hand side of defence, we brought in a former Lincoln City player, Akeem Hins, and again, 
he was pretty decent. Not the best going forwards, but he was very solid defensively. The average ratings don't really give him justice, but eight assists was pretty good going. Again, kept lots of clean sheets and is quite a physical player. I think Ben Eriksson was the last player we brought in over pre-season, uh, just a centre-back, basically. We were pretty leaky at the back, basically. We didn't have anyone good at centre-back, um, so we brought in Ben Eriksson as well to sort of solidify that back line. Technically, he's terrible, but mentally and physically, he's good enough for this level, so he was a decent signing. Unfortunately, we lost one of our special Best. unfortunately we lost one of our left midfielders to injury he was out for like a million years with a broken leg or something like that so we had to get someone else in very quickly to play on the left hand side so Steve Kane didn't have to play every single game so we brought in another youngster uh, Tabish Hussain he came in as emergency backup for us essentially won't stay for us any longer because he's not got much potential and isn't developing very quickly so we'll get rid of him but he's a decent player for Pakistan internationally. So he, he could be worthwhile keeping. The final deal we did, we had to improve our centre of midfield. So Luke Young came in on loan from Wrexham in January and was really, really good actually. Was very good to sort of fill in the gaps as and when needed. Played lots of games in different positions. He was really useful to have lots of different you know, diversity and uh, you can play in different positions and then of course that back to that Darren Ward guy with one pace and two acceleration. So that was kind of the transfers that we brought in. There were more characters in, in the squad. James Montgomery, our goalkeeper, is absolutely ridiculous. He should not be playing at this level. He should be playing a lot higher up. He was brilliant for us. Uh, didn't really concede many goals, kept plenty of clean sheets. Nathan Dale, he turned out to be one of our best players this season as well, a centre-back who can play all across the back line, versatility all over the shop, he was superb, so uh, Nathan Dale is probably one of our fan favourites. Greg Olley is, I would say, the best player at the club, he was superb this past season, uh, 5 goals, 8 assists, a 7.11 average rating, was always there or thereabouts in and around the goals, uh, always helping create them and stuff like that, so Greg Olley, I would say, is the best player in our team. But the top goal scorer in our team was Jordan Preston, a striker who's not got great finishing or first touch. There's nothing really hugely stand out about him, but he did get 20 goals in the league, 26 overall. So we can be pretty happy with how Jordan Preston was. So let's take a look at the schedule then. We had a fantastic pre-season, as you can see, uh, by absolutely battering everyone, only conceding two goals to Tranmere, who were quite a few leagues above us. Plenty of players in on trial at this point, so there's plenty of names here that people just won't recognise because they're only on trial for a short amount of time, but absolutely wiped the floor with absolutely everyone. Really good pre-season. And it showed because we started off the season phenomenally well. A 9-0 win in the FA Cup second qualifying round against Old Church to actually start our competitive football campaign. A 0-0 draw with Boston was pretty decent because Boston, we knew, were going to be a strong side. Spennymore, that was more disappointing because they are not a very good side and got the draw. But after that, win after win after win. As we went on an FA Cup run, we beat Needham Market, we beat Chester, and we got to the FA Cup first round. We wanted a big draw. We wanted to go to Sunderland away and get huge money for the gate receipts. No, instead, we were given Fleetwood Town away from home, a League One side with a stadium smaller than ours. Now, this game broke our hearts because we went 1-0 up just before half-time, uh, Langstaff scoring the goal until... Oh, I, can't, I can barely bring myself to look at it. Until this happened. I mean, Fleetwood deserved the win looking at expected goals and everything like that. Come on. No. No. No! Oh, the 88th minute. Fleetwood breakthrough. Oh, we've done so well. How is... And it's such a stupid goal to concede. Such a stupid goal. Why was the keeper not taking that free kick? Because that just played Madden on side. He had so much time and space to do it. Obviously, that sent us into extra time, where extra time, we got romped, basically. We did get lucky through a penalty, but they scored two goals as well. So, uh, well done, Fleetwood. Well done. You broke my heart. Following that defeat, though, we went on a really long, unbeaten run before we lost our first league game of the season to Chorley. And that kind of opened the floodgates a little bit heading into January and February, where we just could not get a win, basically. We couldn't, we just, we, we could get wins, as you can see. We just weren't consistent with the wins. And uh, some of the fans were getting on our backs as well a little bit. Despite some players playing really well, some of our fans just didn't really like the way we played. Egardo. Egardo Carrasco. Who do you think you are? Why are people banging on about Preston's performance? He just scored five bloody goals, lads. Pipe down. So if I ever see this Carrasco guy ever again, uh, he will be getting his head pummeled in.
Luckily though, just at the end of February, heading into March, we did start to get our form back and it was it was looking pretty good, I must say. It was looking pretty good. As you can see, four wins on the bounce there. An unfortunate loss to Blythe and then two draws in a row and a loss. It was frustrating because we thought we got our form back. We hadn't got our form back because we then couldn't win games and we had to do something about it. We were dropping down a table a little bit. Boston were looking really, really strong and we had to win a game. And then came, I think, the turning point of the season this match against Geisley. Inside of 12 minutes, we went 3-0 down, which was atrocious. It could get worse for us. Oh, it's getting worse for us. 30 goals for Kane Felix. This. We then scored one goal, I think, just before half-time to make it 3-1. And then we got our second goal. Actually, if not the longest, come on! <laughs> I believe. I believe. You know how much I believe in this? You know how much I believe in this? I'm putting some, some music on. That's going to motivate us. Come on. With the second goal, the change of music... I was up for it, you guys were up for it, and we absolutely went for it, and uh, we made it 3-3. Got three players arriving in the area, Kane, swing it in, Ward, Ward, come on! Go! Come on! Go! We've done this, we do not let this slip. He must have a foot like a traction engine. He must have a foot like a traction engine. Let's go! Come on, one more needed now. One more needed. And then just when it couldn't get any better, we made it 4-3. Now, come on. Preston. Oh, I thought it was a bad back pass then. Win this header. Hins wins the header. Kane on the ball. Kane coming forward. Kane to put a ball in the middle. Kane. Langstaff. Langstaff. Back to Kane. Kane. Ward. Ward. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Dan Ward with the hat trick. Of course, we then made it 5-3 as well to round off a superb second half performance there. Uh, Dan Ward getting himself four goals in that game. Dan Ward scored plenty of important goals. He was a right winger for us. Uh, unfortunately, he is leaving to join Derry City, which isn't the worst thing in the world. He wasn't our first choice right winger. Wasn't playing plenty of games, but scored very important goals for us. So uh, Dan Ward, we, we wish you the best of luck at Derry City. We wish you the best of luck. Uh, hopefully you are a success there. Thank you for your contributions. And then the final stream of the season. We went from this Kidderminster game all the way through to this big win against Hereford. And I think there's quite a lot we should probably show from this stream. Got one game in hand over Boston and York. Win it. We go top of the table by two points. And then for the first time this season with three games to go, we will find ourselves at the top of the table with the only automatic promotion spot. This is going to get so tight. Get a nice early goal in this game. And then we can just control it. Hussein out wide. Hussein in the box. Hussein wins as a penalty. Come on. Ben Eric. Why is Ben Eriksson taking them? That's kind of risky. Why is Greg Olly not on it? Greg Olly's our penalty take. He's on the pitch. Why was Greg Olly not on that? Oh. I remember now. I know exactly why Ben Eriksson was on the penalties. Where is that little rat in the chat? I'm pretty sure it was Burks in the chat. I'm pretty sure he redeemed the channel points to have... He redeemed the channel points to have... It. That's why he's on there. That's why I was so confused. It's because... <laughs> oh, it's because Burke redeemed the channel points. Your penalty taker may have just cost us the league title. I'm going to say that to him. I hope he feels bad. Go on. Oh, dear me. Come on. Preston. Come on. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Go on. <laughs> oh, oh, no. You love to see it. Burke's redeeming it for the best penalty taker. I'll make the sacrifice. Oh, you love to... How many channel points has Burke got saved up then if he's... Dropped 20k channel points in like the last two streams. <laughs> Amazing stuff. He's made up for it though. Okay, after the game, we'll set the best penalty taker for up to take penalties next. Importantly, we have won that game. With three games to go, it's looking it's looking good. But we need to beat Alfreton. 
This is the last of the easy games, quote unquote. Everton are far down. Come on! I can't, I can't even say the words I want to say. A penalty. Burks, Preston's up on this one. Preston, please. Please. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Look how many players we've got forwards. We've got, if we don't score from this, if we don't score from... <laughs> How has he missed? How has he missed that? Okay. Two games to go. We've got Fylde and Hereford in sixth and fifth. But if Boston suddenly turn us back around, they go back on top of the table with two games to go after bottling a 14-point lead that they had at one point in the season. The Boston, who have they got? They've got Farsley Celtic in 22nd and then Fylde. So they're guaranteed at least one of those wins, I imagine. York who have bottled a few things. They keep, if not won in a while, they've got Bradford and they've got Chester. And they should be winning both those games, really. Come on, Kane. Come on, Kane. There we go. Come on. Heading into the final day of the season, it's between us and Boston. York are out of it. They're too far behind. Fylde, please do us a favour and beat Boston. Let's all say a quick prayer right now. To our father, Art and Fylde. Hello, be by name. Beat Boston. Let us win the title. Amen. Come on, Kane. In the middle. No one's there. At least near the ball where he put it. It's not a great cross, really, was it? We win it back. We are all over this Hereford side. As Langstaff, Preston shoots. They are so good at defending, though. So good at defending. Oh, red card. Red card. Red card. Come on. <laughs> Hereford have a man sent off. Boston still drawing. We're at half time though. We're at not half time yet. Greg Olly up to Preston. Let's get one before half time. Let's get one before half time. Kane, Young, Young, Langstaff, Langstaff, come on! Come on! Yes! Perfect time to score. I've spat all over my screen then. Perfect time to score against 10 men. It's happening. You only root against Tom when he plays teams that are anti-Bournemouth. This is actually the only time he's played one that isn't. And another red card. Another red card for Hereford. Hereford down to 10 men. Right. Uh, nine men now. Nine men. Boston have scored. What? What? No. No. Boston can't be winning. Oh. Nine man. Nine man Hereford. And Boston have scored, you're right. Filed, come on. Where's the Boston score even gone? Boston aren't even on there anymore. So I don't know what they're doing. Come on. We're doing our bit. We've done our bit. We've done our bit. This is emotionally draining right now. This is emotionally draining. Filed, if you're out there, if you're out there, Filed, please. If you're listening and you can hear me, just get an equaliser. Please get an equaliser. They have done. They have done. It just popped up there. It just literally, it popped up there saying that we've gone top of the table. I think, I think they've... Oh, get off a highlight. Get off a highlight. I want to see the league table and scores. How do I see? I feel like I can see it. Oh, wait. Hang on. Can I do this? Wait, where's Boston? Boston aren't on here. But they are drawing. They must be. They've dropped down. They've, they, they're not on the scores, but they... Come on! This is it. The league title. Nicholson puts it wide. The league title is in our hands. It's in our grasp. Come on! Come on! Where's Boston? Boston? I need to know the Boston score. I know. Why is it not showing the Boston score? That's it. Game over here. Game over here. Like we've won it. We've won. We've won the game. 
Have we won it? Good work out there. You did what was needed of you. Have we won the trophy? I don't know. It's not telling me. Come on! You love to see it. We've won the league title at the last moment of the game. Oh, amazing. 93rd minute from Files. Come on! This is amazing. What a moment. Oh, we can. Maybe we can see it now. We can see it now. It's a deep free kick. Oh, the keeper. What was the keeper? Boston's keeper has let them down there. Boston's keeper has let them down hugely there. So let's. Oh, look at this. The keeper rushing out. Misses it. Phyllis Kirk rises like a salmon. Oh. Absolutely beautiful. What I need to do very quickly is get the list of subscribers up. And that is how we ended up winning the league in absolutely dramatic fashion at the very end. It was mental. It was mental. But uh, we succeeded in getting promoted this season. So we've got another season coming up in the Vanarama National League. A season above, a season above, a league above, which would be really good fun. And fingers crossed, we don't get relegated. That's the plan. Just don't get relegated. But the streams aren't all just about Football Manager. Here's a couple of my uh, favourite clips from you guys that uh, that came through. So, um, oh, this is very... Look, it's tidy. It's tidy. It's tidy. There's nothing to see. Uh, who are we playing against? AFC Telford. I'll get a screenshot of it in a second. I'll get a screenshot of it, which would be quite good. Uh, in fact... I feel like I had a screenshot earlier on that I wanted to save. I haven't quite saved it yet. There's a story behind this. I told my mates, obviously, I was going to the gym more. Um, and, they, and they were like, oh, you know, how's it going? And I said, judge for yourselves. And I photoshopped my face onto the rock. I mean, I would take my shirt off now to show you, but, you know, I, I can't. I, I don't want to risk... In fact, this could risk... I don't know if this is great for Twitch, actually. Twitch might not like this. Let's generate my number. 116. Uh, if I can find number 116. Number 100. <laughs> I mean, this looks like I've rigged it. Because it's, it's my friend in real life. It's genuinely my friend in real life who's won this. <laughs> it's 116. It's, it's my friend Ethan. It, it can... You can see that behind my head. Right, I'm going to send him a message. I'll call him. Let me call him. Hello, Ethan. Uh, you're live on twitch.tv slash TomFM. Why? Well, because um, we just... <laughs> the chat are getting a bit mental. They're saying this is all rigged. It's not. I promise you this isn't rigged at all in any way. Um, I'm going to guess you've won the league. Oh, no. Yeah, we just won the league. That's true. But uh, this, is, this, this applies to you more. Obviously... We've got the giveaway for a subscriber. Yeah. It did the random number generator. It came from number 116, which equates to the username Ethan O'Brien6. You're having a laugh. <laughs> so it's on screen right now. Um, what the fuck? Yep, so congratulations. <laughs> congrats I've won the giveaway. You're having a laugh. You've won my own <laughs> giveaway. And everyone's like, this is rigged. It's not... <laughs> Hey chat, it's rigged and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> no, don't say that. So when you are watching the streams, uh, make sure you do clip them. That would be massively appreciated. So when you are watching the streams, if you think something's funny, you think something's good, make sure you do clip it. Give it a good name and a title. I'll see it after the stream and all the best ones make it into these videos. So with that, we'll end this season recap of the uh, of our first season. And with that, we'll end this first season recap of the first season that we had with Gateshead United. For those of you who are interested, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at the moment. It might change, but it probably won't for a little while. So every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday right now. And if you're watching this on Thursday when this video comes out, the likelihood is I am streaming right now. So link down in the description to this Twitch channel. Uh, come and hang out, say hello and get involved with this Gateshead stream. So I will see you in the streams, but I'll also see you on here next time out as well. Have a good one. Goodbye.